CataractCoach.com. Sneakier with 360 degrees of pupil seclusion and a surprise Iowa complication at the end of the case. So we sped the video up just to get through it. And you can see there's a sneakier here, poster sneakier, all around, kind of gluing that iris down. The pupil's glued down to the anterior lens capsule. So with a couple of pairs of these, just using your viscoelastic cannula to inflate a little bit in the anterior chamber, but also to separate the sneakier. Now here's the tripan blue dye. Be cautious, because you need to get the tripan blue dye under the iris as well, because you want to stain not just that central two or three millimeters of the capsule, you want to stain all of it. So you need to sometimes put an extra drop or two underneath the iris in various quadrants just to get a full stain. Now more viscoelastic can go inside the eye here. And once you have that viscoelastic inside the eye, you're gonna wanna do some sort of pupil expansion here. Now, do you want a pupil expansion ring? Do you want iris hooks? Do you want to just stretch the pupil? Let's watch together. I'm watching for the first time with you. So here we go, surgeon making an incision there with a keratome. And let's see what else is going in here. More viscoelastic, but again, breaking sneaky. Sometimes there's a pupillary membrane you may need to peel off of there first. And so now, let's see, more viscoelastic from the other direction. Yeah, so don't trap too much viscoelastic under the iris because then that'll shallow the anterior chamber even more. So you want to get some good sneaky lysis there, break up all those adhesions. And then you can do some sort of pupil expansion. So most people here would put in iris hooks. I think it's a very reasonable choice. And let's see, skip ahead a little bit. Hey, in the meantime, let me tell you about the Cataract Coach podcast, the top podcast in all of ophthalmology. It teaches you how to be a more successful ophthalmologist. It's everywhere where you find your podcast. Check it out. Now, coming in here with a chopper in one hand, scissor cook in the other. Just when you do this, be careful. Don't damage the anterior lens capsule. That's the key. So going in here, getting a bit of a stretch. Sometimes it's easier to put the instruments through the two pairs of TCs to avoid flattening the AC with a loss of viscoelastic. And when you do the pupil stretch there, you're going to end up causing little sphincter tears there at the pupil march. And that's okay. You're kind of expecting that. And so, and a patient, patient like this also, get good anesthesia. Do a peribulbar, retrobulbar, subtenon, some sort of good block here. Now it looks like an Irish push pull in one hand, maybe chopper in the other. And again, be very careful. Don't damage the lens capsule. That's very critical here. Sometimes I've seen a resident inadvertently damage or puncture the anterior lens capsule as the pupil stretch is going on. Now, going inside here, let's see. What are we going to do? We're going to, okay, more stretching. And at this point, you may have also just been able to put in a pupil expansion ring or even my preference probably would be iris hooks in a case like this. You just uh, have much better exposure that way and less stress. But now let's see what we get here. Hey, actually, you know what? I take that back. The pupils expanded quite a bit now. I bet if you use some viscoelastic, get some viscomedriasis. There you go. You probably got like a four and a half millimeter pupil. This right now is plenty in order to get the case done. So get a rexus done now, but make sure you get a juicy rexus, meaning I want at least a five millimeter rexus. And the pupil is just about five millimeters too. So at least go to the pupil margin. Ooh, the capsule looks a little wrinkly there. If not, doing the rexus a little bit under the pupil margin like, like is being done here. Very nicely done. So again, good technique here. Beautiful, big rexus. The mistake is to make a baby rexus. Unfortunately, this surgeon is doing a fantastic job and doing a nice, generous rexus. Probably five to five and a half millimeters. And now let's see the hydro dissection. Now, in a case like this, if the AC is shallow, you may not be able to prolapse the nucleus partial out of the capsule bag, as you've seen me do many times. So here you may want to just chop in the bag or maybe do a groove down the middle and a stop and chop. If you do a groove down the middle, make the groove kind of double wide, and therefore it'll debulk the nucleus for you. So let's see what the technique's going to be here. A little more viscoelastic, always a good thing. We like viscoelastic. And now let's see, going in with the FACO probe. And the chopper in the other hand looks like, so maybe a vertical chop technique with that type of chopper. Let's see. And vacuum, vacuum up the anterior lens cortex. And for the nucleus, we're going to go, looks like, uh, what's technique here? Probably, I'd say, oh, look at that, tilt and chop. I like it. Beautifully done there. A tilt and chop, get that nucleus partially prolapsed up now. Look at that. So there's probably enough AC depth to accomplish this. Nice chop technique here. Get those pieces forwards. You got it. 
And just imagine, once you get this big bulky cataract out of the eye, probably four and a half millimeters anterior to posterior thickness, and replace it with that nice thin eye, well, wow, you'll get a nice, you know, deepening of the anterior chamber. Plus, you're very unlikely to get adhesions or further sneakye of the iris on top of the um, acrylic lens, especially if it's a hydrophobic acrylic lens, unlikely to get further posterior sneakye there. Another reason you want to avoid the baby rexus is if you had a baby rexus, you could get sneaky again to the anterior capsule rexus edge, to the anterior capsule that remains. So you want that big rexus here. So taking these pieces out nice and easy and keep track of where the pieces are, though. That's really important. You must keep track. Make sure nothing's remaining behind there. Sometimes when you're at the end here, I'll use the chopper to lift up the iris to get a better view, especially with cortex removal. Now, you got two pairs. This may be a great time to do a uh, bimanual approach for the cortex removal. Although the capsule bag looks pretty empty. But going over the eye probe again, okay, coaxial probe. Don't grab the iris. Go underneath it. And it looks like the capsule is pretty clean. Here's the case, though. Once you get the eye well in the capsule bag and the eye still full of viscoelastic, I like to use the chopper or Sinsky hook or something else to lift up the iris 360 and just check to make sure the haptics and optic are all within the capsule bag and also make sure there's no retained lens material in the capsule bag, like some cortex at the capsule bag equator. You want to avoid that. So fill the eye with viscoelastic. Let's see the lens choice. Almost certainly going to be a monofocal lens. And okay, eye well being loaded by assistant. I take that. You should definitely know how to load your own eye well. And if you don't have your assistant that day, what are you going to do? So let's see, eye well being loaded up. And this case is probably going to have more inflammation in the post-op period too, so be careful, you may need more steroid uh, treatment. Now look at the injector, look, it's kind of poking through the wall of it. So injecting the lens, and the lens, this is the surprise, it's getting stuck. So maybe a misload on that lens. Huh. You know what's better option here? Reload it, or if the lens is damaged, just get another one. Okay to get another lens. So sometimes your technician needs your help. You need to load the lens. In all fairness, the technician doesn't have a high-power microscope to look through, so it's a lot harder to see. So perhaps getting another lens in here. I've left this part in so you can feel the certain stress, the stress right here of, okay, where's the lens? Now we've got the, the scope away from the drapes. And now let's see, okay, what are we waiting for? Perhaps this is just to avoid light toxicity to the retina as the new lens is being loaded up. I'm interested to see what happens here. I could cut this section out of the video, but no, come on. We all need to feel what the surgeon's feeling. Skipping ahead five minutes. Okay, so the surgeon did skip ahead on the edit. I didn't edit the video, the surgeon did. So now let's see, get the lens in again. Hopefully it's loaded appropriately this time. Looks better, better, better. Deliver. Oh, still kind of stuck. I would have this technician review lens loading. That may be an issue here. So get that lens in. Now get it in the bag. Make sure that happen goes in the bag. Is it in the bag? Oh, I don't know. I don't know. Now what's the clue that it's not in the bag? The Iowa won't center up well. So let's take out the viscoelastic here. Go behind it, sure. And then get that lens recentered. Here's where I like to just lift up the iris with this chopper through the paracentesis or Sinsky hook and make sure the eye wall's in the bag. Both haptics are in the bag. If you have one haptic in the bag, one in the sulcus, the lens will decenter and, of course, cause UGH syndrome, which in this UVA to guy is the last thing you want. Oh, I double checked that. Let's just make sure. Get that lens in position. Make sure it's fully in the bag. Otherwise, you'll be coming back to the operating room with chronic inflammation again from that haptic rubbing the back surface of the iris. Well, beautiful case here. That's a tough one. Thank you for forwarding that. And remember, watch the patient in the post-op period for increased inflammation. May need a longer course of post-op therapy on the steroids. And remember our podcast, top podcast in all of ophthalmology.